Good evening, everyone. I am making this video tonight to talk you through your Journal Club presentations. I spoke about this a little bit in class, but I'm going to go through all of the details for you and show you where everything is located. So going on from here. So step one is to find your article. So the easiest place to find these is going through our library database, and that'll give you access to many educational resources. I think the two that are going to be the most helpful are PubMed Central and Academic Search Complete. Some of you may be familiar with PubMed. PubMed Central is just a better resource for having the full text in articles. Um, the regular PubMed a lot of times only has like the abstracts available and you, I don't want you to find a paper you want and then have find out that you have to pay for it. So you can also search on Google or go read any journals that are related to your specific field of interest. I'm going to walk you through the accessing the library databases. So if you are on your colin.edu webpage, you go to your Cougar Web login. Wait for everything to work. Now up here in the corner is what you're looking for. You're going to click on library. And then find articles in databases. So you can jump directly by letter, like go P and you can scroll down. And here's where we have PubMed. Right below it is PubMed Central. You can see mostly citations and abstracts where this one includes full text. If you click on it, you can search anything you want. Let's say we want Alzheimer's disease, just as an example here. Now it pops up with everything you need on the first page. Ooh, that's really long. But once you click on one of them, Sometimes they will have over here in the corner, you can directly download the PDF. Other times it'll be from someone else's website. I'm gonna to try to find one. And of course, everyone I click on is now going to be different. Okay, so this is what I wanted to see. Sometimes it'll have you be able to go to like the Journal of Neuroscience or it'll say PMC full text. That one works just fine for our Colin access, but sometimes you'll click on it and you'll think you're gonna have access to the full paper, but then when you get in, oh, this one does have it. Um, it'll ask you to pay for it. So sorry about that. It's, you can't tell until you click on that database to find it. Okay, jumping back. Okay, so I did mention you can Google and you, Google Scholar has a lot of papers available too. Or if there is something that you buy a subscription to, like if, say you specifically um, read about cardiac incidents, well, you can use anything related to those as well. It just has to be a primary research article. Your topic needs to be related to genetics in some way. Most of the time people will start looking at a disease that they want to learn more about or a specific medication, something like that. And you can keep bouncing around through the database until you find an article that you think is going to work. The length of the paper doesn't really matter, but I find that most of them are about five to eight pages long. It depends how many pages of references they have. Now, if you find a paper that is longer, like 20 or 30 pages, you can choose to focus on only certain parts of it. Let's say they have six different experiments. You can talk about two or three that are related to our class and ignore things that aren't related to it. Your um, video needs to be about 10 to 15 minutes long. And the article needs to come have come out within the past couple years. If you do an older article, I'm going to expect you to have followed up with research that has occurred since then. Now, I did say this has to be a primary research article, not a review. So 
Primary research articles are written by the scientist explaining the materials and methods. They go through all of the steps that occurred and they have the direct results. Review articles are what would be if, if I wanted you to present about Alzheimer's in general, you would be looking at review papers and trying to find somebody who has compiled all of the research into one coherent paper. I don't want that. I want a, a direct experiment that somebody has done. Now, if you use a research article, you are automatically gonna have 10 points deducted. The other problem is because of the way the papers are set up, they're listed by topic instead of being listed as materials and methods, results, and it's gonna make it very hard to set up your presentation. If I'm reading the grading rubric and I'm trying to follow along and you don't have materials and methods or you don't have results, you're going to lose even more points because I can't give you credit in that category. They usually say review articles somewhere on the paper, but the easiest way to tell is if you see abstract, introduction, and then instead of jumping into results or materials and methods, it gives you the topic. Uh, and it's kind of like the way a book would be broken apart into chapters. There's different section headings for different topics they're covering. That means it's gonna be a review paper and not a primary research article. If you find that the papers you're reading are just too hard and too complicated, don't lose hope. Uh, you're, you're going to have to read a paper multiple times to really get everything that you need to. Sometimes you find you don't have an adequate background knowledge. They are just too complicated for your level of understanding or they simply do not make sense. I have found papers that have typos in them or mistakes that made it through peer review or it was from a non-peer reviewed journal and they are flat out incorrect. And you're like, well, I keep reading it, but the statement doesn't make sense. It contradicts itself over here. You don't wanna present from a paper that doesn't make sense. You need to be prepared to look up points that are made in the references. You need to look things up in a textbook that you've uh, or looking up words in the dictionary for, especially if you're talking about a disease where you need to know the anatomical names, something like that, it's okay to need to go look it up. But if you had to go look up that information, assume that your audience would need that information too. So be aware of the need to give definitions. If there is something that you know from your field of study that is not common knowledge for the class, let the audience have those definitions as well. And you can also ask questions of pe from people you may know, like me. I might be able to help you understand something. Now, step two is choose your delivery method. I don't care how you do your presentation. You can either do a voiceover like this, so where I mentioned down there at the bottom video angle, you can use voiceovers without showing your face. This one is being recorded in Zoom, and then I'm going to upload it to YouTube. But you, I will talk about how you are going to get your video file to me. Um, just make sure that if you are presenting in a room that you check and make that you can hear yourself. If you are presenting on the far side of with the projector showing up on the wall and somebody is recording you from their cell phone, you need to speak loudly and make sure that the font, um, whatever you are presenting can be read. Um, another program to be, that could be used is Prezi. They now have Prezi video and you can have little pop-ups on your screen, it, it being from your computer camera or it can be from more PowerPoint style. I don't care if you write on the walls in crayon to in a dry erase markers or whatever you need. I find that the computer programs are generally easier, but it is up to you. Do whatever you want and that you think is going to look professional. Step three is look at the grading rubric. I am going to use this rubric to grade your presentation. If you look through and see that there's things that your video didn't include, that means you're going to lose those points. So I want to show you this. 
I do believe I passed out copies of this. I have made a few edits on here, like what to include on your title slide. As we go down here, you know, it says like student's name, article information, et cetera. If it's missing the journal information, you're missing other things that are listed. Up here, it tells, tells you to have your student name, the article's title, the author's names, the journal of publication, and the publication date. If you're missing some of those, you're going to lose points. There, it asks for your introduction. It's worth five points. Materials and methods is 10 points. Your results are worth 10 points. Discussion is worth 10 points. Clarity of presentation. If it looks like a poor dress rehearsal, you're gonna lose points. Your graphics need to be able, it's more important that you can read your writing. This is the exact same one that you would be given if you were being graded in class. So I'm not looking for you to do special visual effects in your videos, not what I'm talking about. I mean, can we read the graphs that you put up? I'm gonna show you some examples in a minute. Your time management, your bibliography, which is your references, that you have a proper spelling and grammar on your slides, and just general application to the class. If it's something that does relate to our class, full credit, 15 free points there. But if you give me a topic that's not related to genetics in any way, I'm going to have to take off some points. It could be the best presentation ever, but if it's from your eighth grade math workbook, well, it's not going to help me very much. Okay, note that there was no subject or no section heading for abstract because the abstract is just that short paragraph that's written at the beginning of the paper. And I find that if people try to present the abstract, they read it pretty much word for word because it's already so summarized. And while you do want to state your objective for the paper, you don't want it to be like giving all of the information and then turning around and giving all of the information again. Um, your bibliography means referencing every source you use not going into the paper and copying out their dozens and dozens and dozens of sources and pasting that in there. That wasn't what you did. You will need to have a, a proper reference for the paper you are citing. If your background information that you're presenting included some general information about the disease like that you took from the CDC or World Health Organization, or you took something out of your textbook, any of the images that you use that didn't come out of the paper, all of those need to be cited. Now, sometimes if you steal a picture off the internet, you might have trouble getting a full reference citation. I at least want to see that you're giving credit where credit is due, even if it's just having um, the website listed underneath where the picture came from. If you aren't sure on something, ask me, I can help. You want your presentation to be easy to follow. You don't wanna to put too much text on the slide. So if you notice you, that a lot of times I'm using bullet points and then having my words explain everything about it. You don't have to type out every single word you're going to say. You also wanna make sure that you are enlarging your figures enough that we can actually read them as the audience and put guide marks to show the viewer where to focus. So you can see over here on this image, I have a red arrow and that I'm calling attention to that column. Um, I'm on the next slide, I'm gonna show you, it'll show you, you could see what I clipped this out of. But um, you also might need to retype some of the tables that are in the papers. Uh, when they have population demographics, you might not need all of the information that's listed. You can cut out whatever columns you don't need and type it to, again so it's easier. And you don't need to include every figure from the paper. Now, if your paper only had four figures, you might need all of those. And you might also need to go and get extra figures from um, like anything that's going to help the audience understand the background information or if there are materials and methods that we didn't do in class that you think need a little bit of explanation, you can steal an image from someone else to show that, but just give those references. By comparison, 
if I were to have thrown this on there and I copied in the exact caption that they use, the audience wouldn't have to have any idea what is going on here. You can't tell, you can't read the numbers, the font is too small and there's just too much information going on. Step five is to practice. Do a couple test runs before recording so you don't stumble over your words. There are times where you might want to scrap your entire recording and do it. I'm sorry, <laughs> do it again. I'm not going to bother re recording that now because this isn't that important. Um, but if you were giving your presentation in the classroom, which this is what you were supposed to be practicing this for, you wouldn't get a chance to redo it. So use this to your advantage that you can re record. You, if you find out, okay, I recorded it and I'm at 15 minutes and 30 seconds, that's fine. If you record it though, and you find out that yours is 33 minutes long, okay, no, you need to chop it down, do something like that. I can answer questions to help you figure out like how to display information. If you're like, hey, do I, how can I put this in? I can't get a good copy, it blurs every time I try to import it but I'm not going to watch your entire video, critique it, let you re-record it, resubmit it. You wouldn't have that option if you were in the classroom when you walked up to do your presentation, but in the week prior, if you were like, hey, um, I don't understand this concept or how, where can I find more information about something? I can help you with that thing, type of thing. The last step is to submit it. Depending on the file size, we might have to use a couple different versions. We could uh, have you just upload it to Canvas, but I'm betting there's going to be some sort of size limit. We might be able to email it. Um, worst case scenario, you might have, we might have to upload it to YouTube. If you try to load too many large videos onto Canvas, it will run out of space. That's why I've been posting everything on YouTube. Um, then I, it might be that you send me the large video file, I upload it to YouTube, and then we post the link on the discussion board for people to be able to go over there and watch it. Uh, we'll just try it and figure out which version works best. I also need a copy of the paper, or at least the link to where I can download a copy of the paper if the file is large. And last but not least, it is time to pass judgment on your peers. I want you to go in and view the presentation submitted by other students. And hopefully there'll be a discussion board set up for the, uh, you to watch the video directly on there or the link to their YouTube. And you can post a comment on there directly or if you are more shy about critiquing other people and you wanna have your comments posted anonymously, you can email it and I will post the comment um, under my name. Your comments must include at the minimum two things that they did well, two things that they could improve on, you know, constructive criticism. Don't just say that was terrible. Like you have to say, I couldn't hear you because you were so soft-spoken or you went so fast that I couldn't keep up or your font was too small to read. Um, and then you should include a question either for something you want clarification on or uh, something that you would have asked if you were in the classroom. After you have posted your videos, try, try to follow up on the comments made to your page so that you can answer other students' questions. Um, part of this is that you fully understand the topic enough to be able to answer people if they were to raise their hand in the classroom. Okay, I'm going to pop this over to a couple presentations so that you can see what I'm talking about. I have uh, one uploaded that is things not to do and one that is things to do. So on this one, whoop, here is what not to do. You do not want it to say Journal Club and Jane Doe or whatever your name is. You need to have all of the information that I've said to you on the rubric. Do not have this much text on your page. Don't copy and paste in part of the paper. That is not how you 
squeeze something down into 15 minutes. So, okay, they do have objectives. And then the materials and methods is, again, copied and pasted from the paper with weird formatting and things that don't make any sense. And not what you want. Then they put in some things, but they don't really give much explanation on it. There's just so much loaded onto each page that we can't tell as a viewer what are we supposed to be looking at on here. And again, every picture, but unless you're going to sit there and talk about every single picture, don't include it. If you notice, almost nothing was actually typed by this quote unquote student. This was made as a bad example, but everything was copied and pasted in. Don't want to do that. That's very hard for the audience to see. By comparison, that same article is now presented here. We have the title, we have the author's names, we have the journal that it came from, and we have the student's name. You want to tell people who you are so that when they are critiquing you, they know who to direct the comments to. They've included some extra background information here so that we could see how the, in this case, the um, hormones are related to each other and some more information about it. Also note, there are little captions underneath that give uh, citations for where these photos came from. This one has a lot of information, but it would be useful for them to be able to explain which part of the cycle we are going to pay attention to at, at any point broken down into bullet points. Now, I'm not going through all of this right now. But again, there's just some background information. In this case, it is looking at how to make a transgenetic mouse and for who picked up the transgene, who's non-transgenic, just anything that you think the audience is gonna need to know to understand the paper. So here is a bit more information. And they have put in these lovely red boxes that tell us what to pay attention to. Now, hopefully the person speaking would also then tell you why those things are important. And going through, there is an objective stated, and now we can jump into the actual meat of the experiment. Again, they have the same workflows on here but they broke down exactly which pictures we wanted to see so that we can tell what is going on with it. On a table, they went in and again, highlighted out the boxes to look at for the wild type versus the transgenetic and the hormone levels to pay attention to. It makes it a lot easier to know what am I supposed to look at on this table? They did include still a lot of pictures, but depending how they were presenting it, that could be okay. There's some results, again, broken down into bullet points instead of just being that wall of text. Conclusions. On your conclusions and in your discussion, it, you should tell me if you found, it, it should be a summary of your, of the paper, but also, looking at were there any flaws, things you would have rather seen, like if there are some questions that they left unanswered, future directions that they should have, that they're gonna look at. If you have a paper that there's been some new discoveries since then, I wanna see the um, future updates or updates that occurred after publication. Any references there? Okay. So I'm hoping that this helps y'all out. If there is anything you need help with, please do not hesitate to contact me. If you want me to look over the paper before you start working, that is also okay. I am going to give bonus points to the first two people that get their presentations done and uploaded, or at least sent to me for me to upload. Um, I would have done this in class where each person is registering for their days, but I figure putting your 
video up first is volunteering as tribute. So you might have some things that I'll be like, oh, I forgot to warn y'all about this. And since you don't have that extra, your score might be a little lower. So those bonus points will help. It'll be like five points. So um, your presentations need to be uploaded at least a week before the end of class. I'm gonna have that date posted if I have not set a specific one already because I don't want everybody waiting until the last week of class, throwing their stuff up there the day before and then having everybody trying to comment in one day. We want at least a week of comment time. So, all right, have a good night.